Come just sit here for me. 7 a.m. The first call of the morning is to take an alcoholic with chronic withdrawal symptoms from police station to hospital. Do you still want me to get your wheelchair, mate? It's unglamorous but important work that paramedics Luke and Caitlin have to balance with their COVID caseload. This year has been challenging. Attending sick patients is what we've always done forever um, and we are still doing that. But I think the call rate was something that really challenged the ambulance service early on uh, when it went from a busy day of about 4,000 calls to 11,000 calls a day. That was back in April when the streets were empty, but the hospitals were full. To maximise capacity then, the number of ambulances was increased from 350 to 450, and firefighters were drafted in to help. He sort of drove and I managed the patients. Um, it was just so that we could increase um, paramedics and clinicians across more ambulances. Bosses say that extra capacity is on standby in case we see another surge this winter. We're busy, um, but we're not perhaps yet as busy as perhaps we would have been uh, in a, a, a normal run up to Christmas. We haven't seen those peaks of demand on a Friday night. We haven't had a, a, a Black Friday demand in the, in the way that we normally would with shoppers. Uh, so we're trying to, to plan really for every eventuality. Having left lockdown too, things could be about to get busier. Hey, we're here. It's no secret that drunk people don't socially distance well. A little bit of a stab in the back really when we're out here trying to help people and wearing masks and still going to work every single day and seeing COVID positive patients when other people aren't making a conscious effort to try and help other people. Shaky pale, confused, not responding. Another call. This time a man in his 50s who's passed out after a fit. No signs of COVID, but Luke has noticed a rise in the number of younger patients. A lot of those people who are very vulnerable are still shielding. Uh, a lot of the younger people uh, are not shielding. Sometimes they're breaking the rules um, and that obviously increases the infection within those specific populations. So you don't really remember what's happened at all? I think that people just need to be so cautious of what they're doing and who they're mixing with. Will you be seeing elderly family members this Christmas? I would love to see my grandparents. I have not seen my grandparents for so long, um, but I won't purely because of this is, this is my job and I couldn't, I couldn't put them at risk like that. Especially with a vaccine now around the corner. The closest hospital to here is University College Hospital. It's a mile away. It looks like there is light at the end of the tunnel one month or six months from now. We're not sure, but uh, if everyone does their bit and pulls together, I think that we can help control the spread of the virus until we can overcome it. Oxygen, temperature, BM. After BM. thorough tests, it's decided this patient needs to go to hospital. Just like most of us during this pandemic, he'll probably be fine. But sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry. Martin Stew, ITV News.